So I am going to do one more example. I want you to do this example and tell me uh, what is the unit step response of this system. So let us say I take this system for example, <coughs> right? What are the values of n and m? n is 2, m is 1. The poles are still at minus 1 and minus 10. What about the 0? It is shifted to 2. So, the 0 has gone to the right half complex plane. So, if we plot this, the poles are at minus 1 and minus 10 the 0 is at 2 now. Okay. Previously, the 0 was at minus 2. What we have done is that we have taken it to 2. Okay. That is what we have done. Okay. Please calculate the unit step response and let me know what happens. Is this correct? Right. So, then uh, what we are going to have is the following. Right. Y of t is going to be minus two. Of course, I I have not simplified the terms. Right. You can write minus two by ten as minus one by five and three by nine as one by three and so on. Right. So yeah. So, this is what you have, right? Am I correct? 12 by 90, right? So, that is right. Yeah, sorry, 90. Okay. So, uh, once we, uh, we have this expression, right? So, for uh, y of t, uh, once again you could observe that uh, the system is stable, poles are in the left off complex, and poles are the same, right? I uh, see, I have kept the poles to be the same in all these problems. Why? because we want to investigate the effect of zeros so i'm not i'm not even touching the poles right so we are we are working the same poles right so we have shifted the zero to plus 2 uh, to the right of plane so the system is still bibo stable uh, what what can you say about the steady state value as t tends to infinity the ma uh, the value of y of t goes to minus 2 by 10 right so the value can be negative also absolutely no problem it it needs to be a finite uh, what to say, real number, that is what we want, right. And uh, you can uh, once again observe that the exponential terms have the poles as the exponents and the residues are also affected by the location of the zeros. Now, we see that uh, compared to example 2, the relative uh, importance of e power minus t has now increased because we have shifted the 0 away from minus 1. See, minus 1 was the dominant pole. When we had the 0 at minus 2, the uh, dominance was reduced. Now, sh we have shifted the, uh, what to say, pole to uh, away from the, uh, what to say, uh, dominant pole at minus 1. You can see that the relative magnitude has once again increased. The dominance has once again increased. That means that the magnitude of the e power minus t term is 3 by 9 e power minus t. This is 12 by 9 t e power minus 10 t. So, you could immediately observe that. Uh, the 3 by 9 e power minus t term will dominate. Okay, fine. So that is the first observation. Okay. So any other uh, observation here that you can make? Like to ask, does the closeness to the other pole matter? The closeness to the other pole. 
it matters, right? So, if you move the 0 closer to minus 10, that dominance, that the effect of that pole will go down drastically, right? So, even without a 0 near it, near to it, you know, like it's anyway, its effect is small. So, so, the pole being so the effect, right? yeah, the 0 will, uh, what I say, decrease the residue, but we are practically, from a pragmatic viewpoint, we are interested in what is happening at the uh, in the vicinity of the uh, j omega axis, right, due to this point, right, because uh, the poles located in the vicinity of the j omega axis would dominate the dynamics, okay, so that is why they are called dominant poles, okay, yeah. okay. So, uh, can you observe something else, you know? So, suppose if I want to plot y of t versus t, sorry, for this, what is y of 0? Of course, I, I need, I can always double check, see whenever we are using this analysis, we are assuming initial condition to be 0. So, once you complete the problem using this transfer function based approach, it is always a good idea to substitute t equals 0 and ensure that y of 0 is 0, right, because that is an implicit assumption that we have made. So, you see that I start from y of 0 is 0, right, and let us say this is my final value, okay. So, this I leave it to you, you can go to MATLAB and plot this function, let us say this is minus 2 by 10. So, what is going to happen is that the output function will go something like this and settle down to minus 2 by 10. Okay, that is going to be the uh, impact of the 0 at my uh, 2, yes. Which one? Uh, the final value of uh, yeah, it depends on how you write it. If I write it as 2 minus it, it will become positive. See, the sign can be negative or positive, okay, you are right. If I go uh, further to the right, Okay, it is going to become uh, one sign or the other, okay, depending on how I write it. See, for example, if I had given you the transfer function as 2 minus s divided by s plus 10, s plus 1 times s plus 10, till you will have a 0 at 2, but the final value would have become uh, 2 by 10, right. So, it really depends, okay, yes. So, but the important effect is this, right. So, in all the previous problems, once again, please go back and plot the output functions, okay. What do I mean by output functions? Uh, the, these boxes, the blue boxes, the green boxes, you know, whatever uh, y of t I have enclosed in those blue and green boxes, right. So, you will see that in all those uh, cases, the uh, initial value is 0 and you will see that the output would monotonically increase to the change to the final value. What do I mean by that? It, it is not going to change signs, okay. So, for example, uh, the final value is 1 by 10 and 1 by 5, the output function will always be non-negative. Okay, it will go from 0 to the final value smoothly, right, so without changing its sign. But in this particular problem, uh, if you plot the output function which is enclosed in this red box, you will see that it, it will be at 0, it will start at 0 at time t equals 0, uh, final value is going to be negative in this particular example, okay. It will so happen that initially it will go, uh, the values will be positive, then it will change sign and then it will come to the final value at minus 10, 2 by 10. If I have written 2 minus s, it will become negative and then it will go to positive 2 by 10, okay. The, the effect is going to be reversed. Either way, you know, like the uh, the conclusion that we can draw is that if you have a 0 in the right of plane, your step response is going to have such a characteristic where the response will start off in one direction, then reverse its direction and go, the, go and settle down in that way. So, let me give you an example. Let us say we take a ceiling fan, right. Suppose if the ceiling fan had a 0 in the right of plane, right, what will happen? Let us say I, I switch on that fan, what will happen? It may start rotating in let us say clockwise direction, after some time it may stop and then start rotating in the counterclockwise direction, Pictureize that, okay, that is this case. Suppose if I had a door which was a non minimum, sorry, which has a 0 in the right of plane, what will happen is that let us say if I push the door, <coughs> I expect it to go out. Imagine a door if it comes in and then goes out, right. So, that is that, fortunately doors are not like that, but then like you can imagine it, right. So, that is going to be the effect of uh, this 0 in the right of plane and zeros in the right of plane 
uh, are called as non minimum phase zeros okay we will figure out why it's called non minimum phase when we do frequency response okay we will see what is the meaning of the adjective non minimum phase okay when we uh, come to frequency response okay but tho those are called non minimum phase zeros okay so what is the definition of non minimum phase zeros zeros uh, in the right of complex plane uh, right of uh, complex plane right and a non minimum phase system is one which has zeros in the right of plane okay and a minimum phase system is one which has all poles and zero in the left of complex plane okay so that is the uh, definition of minimum phase and non minimum phase is it clear okay why it's called non minimum phase what is in what way is the phase non minimum we would see uh, first of all what is phase as per our definition is concerned and then what is minimum non minimum about it we will we'll look at it when we come to uh, frequency response okay so that's something we'll learn uh, later right but that's the impact of uh, non minimum phase uh, zero yes okay good good observation okay so you can always see that the uh, uh, in all the examples okay if i okay you you have essentially preempted my discussion on steady state analysis okay that's good okay i'm happy that uh, you have made that observation what is observation was that not only this problem you take problem of 1 you substitute s equal 0 in the transfer function what do you get 1 by 10 second problem substitute s equal 0 2 by 10 and what are 1 by 10 2 by 10 minus 2 by 10 in these two <coughs> three problems it is the steady state output of a stable system when subjected to unit step input okay but then we will generalize it okay please do not substitute okay the, uh, that's why I, I okay I am telling you this because he made that observation okay but I wanted to teach it in a different way using the final value theorem see we'll, we learn the final value theorem right we use that okay so kindly what to say keep this in mind but do not always substitute s equal 0 to find the steady state value for any input it doesn't work that way okay it only works for this uh, unit step input and that too for stable systems okay so please remember that right okay so anyway we'll come to that that's a good observation but we'll come to that okay now the question is when do we get a non minimum phase system in practice okay like so i i have to give you an example right so when can we get a see if you leave the system design to me i would obviously never put a zero on the right off plane right due to this limitation but can i get a zero in the uh, right off plane by uh, uh, the system's characteristics itself which is given to me yes i can okay because i can get non minimum phase zeros right for example uh, when we have an example of a non minimum phase system okay when we have a system with time delay okay so let's take let me take a simple example let's say i take y dot uh, plus uh, y of t is u of t minus td okay td is the time delay so that what what it means is that i i give an input now that's going to affect the output only after a interval time interval of td okay that's the time delay right so can we encounter time delay in practice yes we do right suppose let's say you know i want to push this desk the force which i am applying is my input does that and the displacement of the desk is the output will the desk start moving instantaneously does it no right why not exactly right you have to overcome static friction at the uh, point uh, at the region of contact between the desk legs and the surface right so even if uh, if you start counting time from the moment i start applying a force on the desk right the displacement happens only some time afterwards right so that's a delay isn't it okay so friction for example right incorporates a delay in a system okay so we'll see that many cases you know like you may have delays see for example you know like let's say i may give an voltage input to a motor the motor shaft may not start spinning immediately 
right? It may take a small interval of time before it starts spinning, right? So question is that like, is the delay time significantly high when you compare it to the time scale of interest? Okay, that's a question we need to ask. But assuming that that, that is the case, then what do we do, right? So I have to factorize time delay. Let's say now I want to find the transfer function, right? You take Laplace transform on both sides, what will happen? <coughs> what would happen if you take Laplace transform on both sides? What will you get? You will get S times Y of S minus Y0 plus Y of S. What is the Laplace transform U of T minus TD? U of S times E power minus TD. Okay. So now take uh, initial condition to be 0, and then the plant transfer function which is Y of S divided by uh, U of S is going to become E power minus T D S divided by S plus 1. Right? Now what are the values of N and M? What is the value of N? 1. M? 0. I have e power minus T D S, right? How can I can I expand e power minus T D S as a polynomial expansion? Yes. What will be the order of the polynomial? Infinite, right? So I can just go to any order I want, right? So I have a problem now, okay? Because the system has become infinite dimensional in a sense, right? The plant transfer function, right? Because you see that the numerator has e power minus t d s which I can expand as a series expansion to an infinite order, right? So we have a problem now, correct? So because we can apply the tools that we are going to learn in this course only for proper transfer functions. That means that we need to have the order of the numerator polynomial to be less than or equal to the order of the denominator polynomial, okay? That's, that's when we can apply the tools that we are going to learn in this particular course, okay? So given this limitation, you know, like what is it that we can do, right? So we can do approximations, okay, of time delay. Fine. So provided, you know, like TD is small, okay, TD is sufficiently small, okay, like I am going to write all these things in quotes, okay. Okay, so how do we do this? You know, like one approximation is it? People will just write e power minus TDS as uh, what one by TDS plus one, right? Correct. You can write e power minus TDS as one divided by e power TDS. You just take the first order expansion of e power TDS and stop there. Okay, that's an approximation, right? So a second approximation is saying, look, I will write e power minus TDS as e power minus TDS by 2 divided by e power uh, TDS by 2, okay? So I'm splitting the exponent by 2. So I'm reducing it even further in a certain sense, right? So then what I do is that I use a first order approximation for both the numerator and the denominator. So I get 1 minus TDS by 2 divided by 1 plus t TDS by 2. This becomes 2 minus TDS divided by 2 plus TDS, okay? So this is what is called Paddy's first order approximation. Okay. Of course, if you use the above approximation, the plant transfer function approximately becomes 1 divided by S plus 1 times uh, TDS plus 1, right? So this becomes uh, like a second order system, an approximately second order system, right? So that's why what happens in the first approximation. So now if I use a second approximation, what happens to the plant transfer function? It approximately becomes 2 minus TDS times 
S plus 1 times 2 plus T B S. Okay. Now, what has happened? We have introduced a non minimum phase 0 right through this approximation. You look at the numerator. Right, T D is anyway positive. What is the 0 of the transfer function? Approximate transfer function 2 by T D. Right, so that is going to be in the right off plane. Okay. So, due to that, what will happen is that if you have uh, if you plot the step response, what is going to happen is that so uh, the output will go like this and then like it will go on oops, it may go like this and then go and settle down, assuming that we are stabilizing the system carefully, right. So, this is indicator of the time delay. In reality, what is going to happen is that the real system output may be something like this. Okay. So, let me uh, show it in blue. Okay. So, the real system let us say there may be a time delay and then like it may go and go like this. Okay. So, in this interval there is no output at all, but then the approximation essentially tells us that oh, okay, the output may go in the opposite direction and go in the correct way. Okay. So, the pink curve is only an approximation of reality. Okay. And why are we doing this approximation? Then only we can design, right? Uh, see, I cannot design with this guy. Okay, the tools that we are going to use in this learn in this course cannot be used for this transfer function, but I can use it for this transfer function. Okay, so that is why we approximate. But the uh, uh, the impact is that we introduce a non-minimum phase uh, zero, which is going to behave like this. Okay, uh, the the dip in this curve is a fictitious dip, it does not happen in practice right, because during that period the actual output is going to remain 0 due to time delay. So, what it says is that okay, look if I if I model time delay for this desk, okay, the actual system response will be that if I give a step force, it is going to remain 0 for some time uh, and then like it is going to move right. So, that is what is going to happen, but what I am predicting through this approximation is that if I apply a step force, the disk is going to come slightly towards me and then go backwards. In reality, it is not going to happen, but that is the approximation we are going to have. Okay? And why are we doing it? Because we the tools that we learn will be can be used only when the pro, uh, transfer function is proper. So, we are using this approximate transfer function. Okay? So, I hope it is clear when we en can encounter non minimum phase zeros right when we have to uh, approximate incorporate time delays and do the design process we have to uh, we have to do this right we incorporate we introduce a non minimum phase zero okay so what we have done in today's class is essentially look at uh, influence of zeros right that's what we have done today so we have looked at uh, impact of poles yesterday so starting from tomorrow's class we are going to look at as i told you stability and performance right we have looked at stability and tomorrow's class onwards we look at performance specifications that will complete the system block.